Hello and welcome to the Paranormal Tourists. I am your host Tom Jordan and I am joined as ever by the regular team, Danny McGellan. Say hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Classic joke, never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Bean, also known as the Ghost Gimp. Hello. And paranormal expert Ross Andrews. I am him. <laughs> <laughs> he is him. <laughs> Here we are back together once again talking about, I use this term loosely, our research of tales of the paranormal, <laughs> where we will in we will in turn discuss uh, various bits and pieces that we have found interesting to do with the world of the paranormal. I'm going to kick off once again with a brief but um, <laughs> a brief but interesting tale that comes. Uh, Where's it from, from my, Tom? <laughs> uh, my favourite research tome, and that is. Uh, Peter Eldon's oh, Amazing Spooks and Mysteries. I've never heard of this book. I always, I always <laughs> Wait, in my head, what? looking at the artwork, I always remember it's an Osborne book, but it's not. It's um, published by Dean in 1992. I just love the illustrations. Yeah, and interestingly enough, it's actually an amalgamation of two different books. And this oh is from the first goodness. half, Amazing Ghosts and Ghouls. So um, this, is, this is a little tale entitled The Agreement. <laughs> the crux of what it's about, it's it's to do loosely with communication between between the living and the dead. And essentially what, what is alleged to have happened is that a gentleman, when he was a student in Edinburgh, a, a gentleman known as Lord, and I'm going to be completely honest and say I've got no idea how to pronounce this, um, Braum, Bru, Bruham, Brauham. Can, can, um, can we just check that you're just doing lots of different pronunciation? He doesn't have like a quadruple <laughs> barrel. <laughs> it's a really <laughs> long name. <laughs> really long name. Uh, B-R-O-U-G-H-A-M. Brauham. Bra Brom. Bra is that your that's from Sam B in there? No, it's the I official. think you just threw up. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a lot of signs. Um, I feel like I want to point out this is not unprepared. I have been staring at this name very long period of time and I still can't work out how to pronounce it but either way he uh, he had a long discussion uh, with a friend of his about about their uh, um, ideas on the possibility of life after, after death and they made an agreement as the title suggests um, that whoever one of them uh, whichever one of them died first would make an attempt if possible to contact the other from the other side uh, and they finished their studies, they left Edinburgh and they largely forgot about this particular this particular subject, at least at least the Lord in question did so. However, many, many years later, um interesting little detail in here, he was stepping out of his bath of all the times of all the times from someone for someone to try and get in touch from the other side. He was just stepping out just of the bath. Have a bath. I suppose it could have been worse. Um, we won't go into more details as to how it could have been worse, but needless to say, he was stepping out of his bath and, and sitting before him in a chair. He saw his friend. He saw his friend, the aforementioned friend he'd made this agreement with. He noted in his diary the, the day, as you do, as you did in those days, noted in his diary the, uh, the date of this particular event. Obviously it was, Un an unusual event uh, and he discovered a few days later on the arrival of a letter from India that his friend had in actual fact died on that particular day it doesn't have the year but the 19th of December is the date on which he was visited by his friend allegedly visited by his friend who sat in the chair as he was getting out of the bath uh, and it was also the date that his friend had died in India so unfortunately yeah. We don't have any more information. Like he didn't sort of say anything. Or he just physically saw. He yes. what we think. was sitting in the chair. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's there's an entertaining little doodle of of the guy sitting in the chair waving, but I'm there is I'm no more information. That wasn't drawn in the diary. <laughs> I'm guessing it wasn't. No, yeah. um, and I can't find any more information. Uh, I'll continue to keep as ever. I'll continue to keep researching this and see if I can find out anything else I mean, about these, the particular these subject. Are well known. Uh, it's very similar to doppelgangers, which we've covered before. Mm. But the, this happens a lot. And uh, most people will end up going, oh, yes, a friend of mine said such and such died and they knew this straight away. The similar thing is where you know where someone is about to phone you and they phone you and all that kind of stuff. So yes. the idea is that you're psychically linked to somebody so that when you, that person is reaching out to you psychically yes. 
and you are creating an image of them within your brain because you're thinking, oh, I'm thinking Tom, 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 and your brain's going, um, yes, he looks like blah, 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 and it creates an image. And so the, there's a, a possibility that the person dying on the other side of the world is giving off this huge amount of energy, if you believe in this, and the other person's getting the signal and they and all they're really getting is hang on there's a lot of energy coming from tom sat opposite me here if he suddenly disappears then i'll tell you uh, and the brain goes the oh i will make a picture of that because that's yes. what we're thinking about um and that's technically the idea behind it and it does happen a huge amount you i mean if we ask our listeners here to write in well don't because i don't want to have hundreds of letters coming from people so <laughs> 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 hundreds. Yeah. You, you'll get a load of people that say yeah that happened to my auntie Barbara, when yeah. such and such died, when a dog died, and a hamster saw it at the bottom the of the garden <laughs> with a giraffe. Um, <laughs> so, if your auntie Barbara lost her giraffe recently, please get in touch. Yes. My mum believes in that. Whenever we see a feather, she's like, "Oh, look, there's my." Someone's dad. getting yeah. in touch. Yeah, or perhaps a bird has just flown past, which is probably more like yeah. not wishing to belittle their. No, no, I totally uh, agree. I'm yeah. like, "Well, no, mum, we're outside." Yeah, now, I mean, I've, I've personally had. The experience, which is documented in a well-known book called Paranormal Cheltenham. <laughs> now, my nan was very ill and was at Cheltenham uh, General, uh, which is phenomenally haunted as well. Uh, it was kind of likely that she wasn't going to make it through the week kind of thing. I was going to go see her on the Saturday morning. And as I was walking to the hospital, I could see... My nan. Now, if you know Cheltenham, I was walking. None of you do, so I'll still explain this. Anyway. <laughs> walking do. down the Bath Road, past the uh, Boys College, which is a fantastically gorgeous sort of gothic-looking building, and that's opposite the hospital. And I was walking past this, and I could see my nan stood on the grass, sort of just by the side of the pavement, kind of looking at me, and then she just disappeared. So it was like, ah, right, okay. In my head, that was, she's probably just died. <laughs> um, came around the corner. As I was meeting my mum, who is my nan's daughter, meeting them, and then we were going to the the hospital. And as we came around the corner, my mum and her sister were coming out of the theatre, and where they'd been having a coffee, and on their way to the hospital, and said, "Oh, we've just had a phone call from the hospital, and she's just died." And I went, "Yeah, yeah, I know." I mean, it's very vague, weird pseudoscience in the fact, as I'm saying, you know, she's giving off this kind of energy in some way you've known her for such a long time you're kind of tuned in to her signal or whatever and the brain's going oh that's uh she's just switched off the <laughs> the, the channel and your brain goes oh well i know what that channel looks like it looks like my nan and then it gives you a picture yeah. but yeah that was a lovely one there are some morbidity for you mm. Mm. the only thing i've sort of tended to find um and i'm sure that i'm sure there's some kind of explanation for this but I, I find this thing a few times where I sort of go 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 into town uh, and, I, and I'm wandering around and I'm sort of there's been a few instances of this and I see some I kind of see somebody out the corner and I think oh oh no no it's not them looks a bit like so and so whoever it is and um, and I go on my merry way and then sort of you know, twenty minutes later I'm wandering through someone and I think, oh no I'm, I'm sure. Oh no. no! I'm sure I thought that person was whoever it was. Let's say it's Sam Bean. I was thinking, oh man, I thought thought that was Sam Bean. And then and then I think nothing of it, and I forget. And it's, it's maybe somebody I haven't seen anyway for sort of six months, something like that. Yes, uh, a lot of this relates to your fight or flight response. Okay, um, and what your brain is doing, it's scanning through when you see something, mm. it will scan through everything it knows until it sees something. Yes, goes, that's yes. what it, that's the closest thing I think it is. And so well, it kind of goes, um, so, say going back to our story about a man in the bathroom, it's, it's a bit hard to do it in that way. But yeah, if yeah. you kind of half see something out of the corner of your eye and you're thinking about that person, yeah. the brain will go, oh, perhaps this is what you've just seen. Yeah. 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 I've so you, it's yeah. a fleeting glimpse. It suddenly goes, that's what I saw. And this comes back to why people see faces of ghosts a lot is because that's the first thing it will go for. If you see, and you'll see people, they'll show you photographs. And go, oh, look at this face. And there's two dots. Yeah, and it's like uh, a pattern. Or yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 your sure. brain is going, oh, well, the thing I see the most is Trying faces. Trying to register So that's it. what it becomes. I, I mean, the, 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 the additional element to this is what's happened to me a few times is I then subsequently, after thinking I've seen this person three, four, five times, 
I then do see that person. Yeah. Um, and hey, randomly, bun- day, yeah, it? randomly bump into them in town, having not seen them for, or really thought about them until that day for So if six you could start year, randomly like seeing that. lottery winning tickets. Lottery <laughs> winning tickets. Okay, just take note of the numbers. I'm sure there yeah. is additionally, you know, a straightforward explanation for that. But at the time, it always really feels like I'm, I'm kind of going, well, maybe, well, maybe the, I should start guessing the lottery the numbers. Maybe I have a kind of explanation would be that the, say there's person A and person B. They're both possibly thinking about each other, or person B is thinking about you, for example. Mm-hmm. So you're picking up on this from miles away, on the other side of the planet even, possibly. Mm. So you're picking up on this person's thoughts about you. Your brain is there going, um, oh, well, Bob's thinking about me. And then every time you half see something, your brain's going, oh, was that Bob? Was that Bob? Was that Bob? Um, and so Bob might be have every intention of coming to see you, but you had no intention of seeing them. Does that make sense? So yeah, well? sure, yeah, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> so when you do actually bang into each other, you'll go, oh my God, I've been thinking about you all day. And he goes, yeah, well, I've been coming to see you, but you've been thinking about it because he's been thinking about coming to see you. Yeah. Does that... Yeah, yeah so there's like a kind of connection, yeah, so there's yeah. a kind of energy. Yeah. Now, Interesting. That's explaining one phenomenon with another load of phenomena <laughs> so uh but that that is a kind that's the sort of para, parapsychology um explanation behind it yeah the other explanation if you're being completely rational is how many days would you have gone out and not thought about that person sure uh and still bumped into them yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then it's from a statistical sure. point of view, you have to look at that and just go, "Oh, hang on, I see him every day." I mean, <laughs> and it, I mean, the the one that which is in in many respects is possibly even more, not maybe not far fetched, but just possibly unlikely is that maybe the first time I think I've seen that person, I have actually seen that person, yeah. just caught them, and by the fifth their... time you've seen them, they've gone, "Damn, I've been trying to avoid <laughs> that all day," right. or at least, yeah, or at least day. I've gone, "Oh, I think that's so and so. I think that's Sam Bean." And then gone, now why would it be Sam Bean? He said, well, why would I bump into That's just too random. I'm not going to bump into Sam Bean. And then, and then my mind is thinking. So I think, see that person, and it's confirmed in my head. It's not that person. And then I see them again. It's confirmed like it's not that person. Yeah, yeah. And then they turn up. And I'm like, whoa, I've been thinking you of seeing Sam Bean all day. <laughs> actually but actually, you. maybe the first time around, yeah. it was Sam Bean anyway. I just, I just tried to <laughs> rationalize it because I didn't expect to bump into him ra- randomly in town. My granddad had a similar skill. Uh, I remember he came out of hospital once after a... Uh, Thank you for referring to it as a skill. <laughs> he, um, Affliction. Well, wait till you've heard the story. Yeah. Um, he came out of Mental hospital. Mental health issue. And we'd been speaking to um, the guy that was in the bed next to him. Anyway, we sat at home and he hadn't left his flat because he'd had some quite major heart surgery, I think, on this occasion. We went round and we were like, oh, you're right, Grandad. Did you hear anything about... Let's say his name was Bill, because I can't remember. Um, and we said... Uh, it would be weird if, in actual fact, it had been Bill. Bill. Maybe it was. <laughs> that's, the, that's the twist. So, Dad and I would, went to see Grandad, and we said, oh, you know, have you heard anything about Bill? And he said, oh, Bill died. We were like, oh, what a shame, what a shame. And we thought, hang on, how does he know? You know, he hasn't, he hasn't left the flat. My auntie and uncle came in, and um, we were like, oh, Bill died. You know, we'd all be chatting to him, and he was a lovely guy. My auntie said, no, he hasn't. He didn't die. I saw him in the post office the other day. My granddad just went, oh, well, he's probably dead by now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a similar sort of skill. Similar sort of but skill. But he, he, yeah. he used to kill people off at will. <laughs> That's more of a disregard for, <laughs> yeah. for other people. That is... Um... What's well, a nice little round was a murder. there? Yeah. And he actually, yeah, yeah, he, he killed just he knew killed something Bill. that we didn't know. <laughs> Hang on. He, has, well, uh, yeah, he may have died. <laughs> he may have died by now. Hang on. What poison did he use? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that fast minute. acting? What temperature or was, is it? <laughs> did he he should have um, suffocated by now. <laughs> didn't Quentin Tarantino make, make a, a film, film about, about it? it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, very good. On very that note, very happy with himself about that. I think so, um, this week the paranormal tourists are going to the cinema to see <laughs> Kill Bill. Kill Bill. Kill Bill. <laughs> so let's move over to Danny. Have you got some exciting stuff for us this, today, Danny? Oh, thrilling! Yes. <laughs> well, uh, this week I've been thinking a lot about. Ouija boards. That's a weird thing to be thinking about. Yes, it is. It is. It's been distracting. Um, Have you been thinking about them I've and then what has turned up? And then suddenly, <laughs> what do we find here? Uh, no, I um, Those are I Jaffa have cakes. always been quite interested 
in Ouija boards. <laughs> Ouija boards are delicious. <laughs> <laughs> they are lovely and tasty and light, but perhaps not a biscuit. Um, um, Ouija boards were actually created by Hasbro, I believe, as a toy for children. Shut up. I will not. Parker it's an Brothers. audio podcast. <laughs> Parker Brothers, I think. Parker oh, Parker Brothers. Brothers. I think, oh. Yeah. I think Has- Hasbro certainly do yeah. make a uh, Ouija board. I feel so, like I, mean, really? I feel like maybe the first people to would chat have to chat maybe the first people to produce them on there's, mass there's been several, I think several. I think they've been oh, around okay. there's been an evolution they've been around really? for a long time. I think However, the Victorians the, were big into but Ouija But they boards. were yeah, but they were originally created as a as a children's game um what, or toy. What was the original objective was to to speak well, to the dead, just like children really? like no, to. No, 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 it, no, 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 no. It was no, it was more to do um, with the, your ability to communicate with your own subconscious. You weren't talking to spirits; you were talking to yourself. And um, there was a thing called a spirit board and the Ouija boards and so on. They had various different things. But um, I'll let you carry on. Because sorry, sorry. I mean, you know much more about yeah. it, but that essentially, yeah. So it was originally a, a game. Um, and so it's it's now people seem to think it's kind of, you know, this really old mystical, oh my goodness, a Ouija board from the seventh century. Um, but in fact, they've only been around in uh, not so much ye olden day, but um, ye newer day. They used to sell <laughs> really, really well until one year oh, when really? suddenly it dropped off completely. And that was the year The Exorcist came out. Ah. And then suddenly nobody wanted to play with them anymore. Because if you remember it, in The Exorcist, uh, she talks to Captain Howdy. And um, I think it was the first time that it had been then related to an evil, like a sort uh, of to evil... To some extent, do- yeah. I mean, wow. they had been used in all seances and so on like that. But the the original Ouija boards, because people say, oh, it means yes, yes. In um, I was literally um, about to ask that. What is, what is Ouija? Well, yeah. there's a couple of we theories. Um, uh, one is that it means yes, yes, which doesn't make any sense because it should say yes, no. Yeah. <laughs> But like, the other not- one was that the actual company that brought them out said, has a Ouija board session and said, what do you want to be called? And the board itself said, oh, Ouija. Ouija. <laughs> All right, and spelt out Ouija on the board. And so the actual, the, the game named, named itself. Named itself, fantastic. Um, but the medium that uh, was doing the seance had a locket around the neck and the, with a picture inside it. And apparently, the, the, this is, I'm vaguely remembering this, the person of the painting was named something like, was similar name to Ouija. Was like, I can't um, really remember Louisa. what name. Yeah, but it was, it was no, it was a foreign sounding name, but I can't remember. It was closer to Ouija. <coughs> oh, I said, I'm being possessed. <laughs> <laughs> it's Captain Howdy, <laughs> back for revenge. But what happened is the Spiritualist Church took the Ouija board and said, oh, brilliant, we can all have a go with that and start communicating with dead people. It came from the planchette and spirits talking boards and so on, and they took this and went... And, and we're really looking back at a time where Freud and subconscious and ego became such a massive thing that everyone went, oh, that sounds interesting, why Let's don't we try talking to our subconscious? And to some extent, that's why they're so dangerous. It's got nothing to do with dead people that makes it dangerous. The dangerous thing is if you start messing around with your subconscious and your inner thoughts huh. without really knowing what you're talking about, you can unleash all known, unknown kind of demons on people. And I don't mean like spiky horns going, whoa, ah, I will burn you. I mean demons <laughs> that are just like deep rooted thoughts that you didn't even know you had and so on. And suddenly this all comes out. Now, if you are from a particular religion that uh, can be very deep rooted going back to sort of childhood and you're accessing thoughts you only half understand because you were a child when you were told about people burning in hell forever and so on and so it creates these things and just goes oh well there you are that's what you want you need these people that are coming back from the dead to speak to you also if you're doing a Ouija board if you take a very scientific approach to it you will get really boring answers. <laughs> really boring. Uh, whereas the classic Ouija board is a bunch of teenage girls all getting drunk or whatever and suddenly contacting the devil. Uh, because they're all there's this heightened expectations. Of, you know, been watching a horror film, you've been whatever. And so that's what's in your head when you're doing it. Like mass so. hysteria almost. Yeah. I have never done one, although I would love to try. My mother has, bless her, 
in the uh, just before she levitated and yeah, just, before, just before horns grew from her head now she um she and some friends um decided to do a ouija board i don't know whether they'd been uh drinking probably um but they were in 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 manchester and they were one of my mum's friends houses and uh they they started doing it and um her friend had a dog who was asleep on the rug anyway they kind of they it started. died <laughs> oh you wish oh. <laughs> no no I, I have no information on how the dog is now although chances <laughs> are <laughs> um we're talking about 40 years ago um so they started doing this Ouija board. <laughs> the dog like growled or something or kind of in its sleep sort of made like a <laughs> type noise <laughs> and they all screamed and refused to go anywhere near the board. So that's like my mum's entire Your experience. Your mum has communicated with a farting yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> so she always, when I was younger, she used to warn me away from messing about with things you don't understand. There could be animals farting near you if you use these things. Um, but yeah, that was her whole, um, but it really, Really, it really, really freaked her out, oh. and so she never went near one again. I've never done it either. I know they they can be really, really freaky. If, as I said, you are bringing to the Ouija board everything that you have ever learnt in or half learnt in your entire life. Mm. That's what you're bringing to it. So if you've come from quite a a religious background, that's particularly like the Catholicism, um, where it's burning in hell and all that kind of stuff, then you're going to believe. Even if you don't believe now, at some point when you were a child, you believed in these sort of demonic things, and that could be what you're unleashing on the on the world. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> whereas uh, if you come from another religion uh, that believes in a different type of thing, that's what comes through. What what often comes through Ouija boards, uh, not so much now, but you're going back say twenty, thirty years. People would communicate with Hitler. Uh, and the evil that would come through because of that. Uh, whereas now that's because that's much further in the past. Uh, young people aren't really going to have that on their mind. Whereas they might come up with something that's a bit more based on the latest horror film or no. Game of Thrones <laughs> or something. Some so they'll start thinking. <laughs> so in pain. Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> my god! <laughs> I've got Sean Bean. <laughs> <laughs> Several times You're saying, in multiple roles. When did you die? In every film. <laughs> every time Which I film? appear on screen. Uh, so, yeah, Ouija boards, they can be hysterical. Lots of fun. But they can really freak people out. Mm. Um, we did. Great one. Uh, the Paranormal Festival in Cheltenham. At the Playhouse Theatre, we had a coffin on the stage. And, oh my goodness! Um, empty, yeah, an empty, empty coffin <laughs> okay, on the stage, sorry. but not by the end of the night. Um, an empty coffin on the stage, and we had a Ouija board on top of the coffin. And uh, the reason we had this is you can fit quite a lot of people round this coffin. That is like a little thinner table sort of thing. So they're all doing this, doing this Ouija board, very practical. And um, and then the whole evening finishes. Lots of the interesting things have happened, and so on and so on. And then a week later, I got a phone call from the theatre manager, and he said, "Right." Um, we, we, we've often had complaints before and we've had, you know, had to deal with lots of things over my time here, but this is the first time anyone has phoned me up and complained because they've taken a demon home with them after <laughs> doing a Ouija board on our stage. <laughs> and um, I went, what the hell? I, right, and he read off this story and said, yep, somebody has said that they've, they're possessed from the ghost hunting night you did on the Ouija board on the stage and apparently you didn't close the Ouija board properly and um, they've taken home this demon with them now I just I said fancy not closing the Ouija board well, exactly, yeah. he's called <laughs> Ian he's a lovely guy but he is a demon that in all fairness that is value for money <laughs> You should, charge a -long him. Event. <laughs> you should charge them because now they've got to return it so we can have it for the next night <laughs> um, anyway to cut a long story short uh, there was lots of backwards and forwards of phone calls of, of the theatre manager just trying to get rid of this woman one of the people that was working with us decided to go and chat to this person who'd taken the demon home with them <laughs> they went round to their house and it turns out that this person was on a lot of anti-psychotic drugs anti-something drugs and something drugs oh, and they said well what what proof you know what is it what's happened and they said well when i got up off the sofa about 30 seconds later like the cushion fell off the sofa and he went right <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, and there was a couple of things of that ilk sort of thing he went well i don't think you've got anything to worry about <laughs> <Some that gravity. laughs> yeah, yeah. but you will get every time you do a ouija board someone will tell you the way you're supposed to do it 
Mm. And I have done hundreds of these things. And I've heard you've got to have a silver coin on it. There's another one where you've got to smash the glass. Another one where you have to say the Lord's Prayer. Another one where... Um, you can't take your feet off the floor. <laughs> that something? Something? I mean, there's, there's a million different ways. But every single person that I've done these with, um, and I do a lot of ghost hunts all over the country where people come from every corner of the country. In fact, we've had people flying from other countries to come some of our ghost hunts. And every single one comes up with a different story. And you think, well, surely... If your system worked, <laughs> then that person would have exactly the same system. And you've all got different ways of closing <laughs> these Ouija boards. I've only done two Ouija boards in my entire life where we got information that none of us consciously knew. I'm pretty sure we couldn't have known from anywhere and then checked it out and it actually turned out to be correct. But most of it you can sit there and just go, oh, well, you knew that already, or you knew that already, and so on. Even if they weren't touching the glass, you think, well, okay, well, if we're going to believe in this stuff, then I may have somehow read your mind and pushed the glass somewhere. Well, I'm a big fan of them. They're well worth doing, especially mm. if you've got alcohol and you've been watching, uh, <laughs> and and been watching horror films. Yeah. What's your, uh, so what are your rules, Ross? I haven't got any. None. Okay. No, they're just freestyle. Do it. Freestyle. Just, 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 yeah. <laughs> just throw a glass oh, on the table. Yeah. Go on then. <laughs> what? The, 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 the human, down a pint before. Yeah. The human brain plays uh, puts a lot of um, a sort of in, <laughs> a lot of belief in ritual, and so a lot of these people want the ritual thing because it creates a more of a hypnotic state for you to be in. And then you kind of take it seriously. Mm. Uh, whereas if you're all giggling your heads off and going, this is gibberish, isn't it? You're, you're not going to come up with anything spooky. So you have these big rituals where people are doing stuff. And if somebody says, oh, this is what you have to do, and they do a whole bunch of things in yeah. front of you, you've gone, oh, okay, well, he knows what he's doing then. So, And you kind of, your brain allows you to believe it. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, that opens makes up, me want it? to go to one and be like and everyone's got an extra pair of pants to put on their head <laughs> <laughs> it leaves a potential paranoia doesn't it as well a, a kind of um, a, a kind of OCD sort of feeling that maybe you haven't done it correctly yeah. and if you mm. haven't done it correctly it'll follow you home then it could something yeah you could get yeah, like well. a bonus demon coming to follow you home bonus or demon like. yeah <laughs> party bag <laughs> now saying bit this, of cake saying this I have done Ouija boards uh and interesting things happen around you whilst it's happening. Not necessarily anything coming through the board, but suddenly something will go flying yeah, off the shelf. Yeah, like mugs. Yeah. Smashed. My friend did want a mug, like a yeah. mug fell off the window sill and smashed or something. Yeah, and and the idea is that you then have to look at that and go, sh would that mug have fallen off and smashed because they've got the window open and the curtain blew it up and all that kind of stuff? And that's when it gets interesting. And I have had quite a few of those. But well, I find it quite interesting. A lot of these um, rituals or these things do start off as games. So there was, um, I remember when I was at primary school, my friend and I, uh, we ran around the playground thinking that we were seeing, <laughs> I'm not even sure if we knew what we were talking about. We'd said Bloody Mary into a mirror <laughs> yeah. several times. Um, and we did this in my bathroom at home. And then in the playground at school, like a we week drank later or something, and <laughs> yes, we saw several of them. them. <laughs> but then I remember distinctly running around the playground at school, really freaking out. And we were both going, she's everywhere, she's everywhere, she's everywhere. And I, to this day, I can't remember whether we were seeing anything or whether we were actively playing a game and just kind of going oh she's everywhere she's everywhere she's everywhere um and, but we got quite a few other people at school kind of being like oh i can see her as well and i think by the end of the game we were like really are you sorry what <laughs> <laughs> i mean we're we're mucking but about <laughs> you could have created a, a mass school panic which yeah in, in, uh, the school closed down there's a lady um, in the school with a gun <laughs> <laughs> but you get a lot of them happening and they happen a lot uh, in japan you get quite a few of them uh where a demon has possessed the toilet and everybody goes in there and uses it suddenly is ill within a week mm. uh, and they're all collapsing and they're all seeing the same things um, and even going back to Salem I mean that's certainly a bunch of kids all started seeing the same things because one person says I saw this I saw this yeah. and there's a distinct possibility you are genuinely seeing it doesn't mean there's anything there but you have created this thing so that much everyone, so yeah. that you're starting to yeah, yeah. we we um I am 90% sure that we didn't even complete because I distinctly remember being in in my bathroom in my childhood home and I distinctly remember saying Bloody Mary once yeah. but I am 90% sure we never even said it <laughs> enough times because I think we were too scared but I think we just decided 
well, we'll say it once and then we'll just start seeing her. We'll just, we'll just do it that way. Uh, and then I watched the film, The Candyman and realized I was saying the wrong thing into the mirror anyway. I was supposed to be saying Candyman, but it, it does, it does interest me that a lot of these things start off as children's games when yeah. you go back to their origin. And then all of a sudden, there's uh, well, something. If you're going back like, to the origin, quite often they're not children's games. They've become children's games from something else that's happened. Ah. And so you've had the spooky thing happen, and it's become and it's kids in the same way that it. fairy tales are horrible stories. They're really <laughs> nasty horror stories that became children's stories. Um, and so a lot of that sort of becomes the kids' version of something ah. in some form of warning: don't do this because yeah, like a moral or something. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, or a fable. Oh, yeah. there, there was a great one uh, in Ireland um, of people seeing a BVM, a Blessed Virgin Mary sightings, uh. um, and a statue. And it, it's brilliant because they actually it got so famous that a film crew went and saw it. So you've got a load of people that are already hyped up. They're ready to believe this Blessed Virgin Mary statue that was on the side of a hill was moving. Mm. And um, the film crew went and filmed it and it, it's brilliant I don't know if you can see the footage out there it's quite old and they're filming the crowd and they're going oh, she's moving she's moving and according to all the witnesses who are all hyped up they're all waiting and ready to believe in this thing they they can say that the Virgin Mary is doing this like and I can't explain this obviously because we're on a recording <laughs> where it's moving from side to side in a gentle swaying motion and they interviewed all these people saying that and they're all huge believers and they're all there to see a miracle and then the film crew sort of pans out a bit and you see the entire crowd just Swing. gently swaying. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like wow. Staring at a statue that's about 200 metres away. But their brains are so hyped up and ready to see it. They're getting that positive um, belief or whatever, you yeah. know, feedback and seeing exactly what they thought they were going to yeah. be seeing, even it's, though it's not happening. I mean, the, the harder you stare at something, the harder it is for it yeah. to sort of remain in focus in a weird <laughs> way. And I've, I've certainly been on sort of amateur ghost hunts where we've just gone out and like you know to a you were we're staying in a creepy place you know and um, we're like right we'll all go and sit in this room in the dark and people stare into the dark and you know gradually people certain people start to see things and then the person next to them kind of gets a bit creeped out and they see something as well but if, if you sit in the dark room and you stare into the dark <laughs> for long enough it's amazing how many exciting things you can see because your eyes will start to do kind of all sorts of crazy well, things and that's the theory focus. behind Candyman and Bloody Mary yeah. that you, and once to, you turn the yeah. light off your brain starts creating it, it creates images it tries to see whatever it can this is an experiment we're going to do on GIMP over here yes. um, <laughs> on a thing called scrying um, I, I will be this? taking you to a castle uh, oh. that's haunted <laughs> actually we're going to be doing the theatre as well and what you do is you stare into a mirror and the idea is in a low light <laughs> and you will see your face change and the idea is you're supposed to channel spirits around you and their face will appear in where your face is if you're really lucky you will start seeing the mouth move as though it's talking to you um, oh, and then you've got to try and lip read but if you're really lucky you will just start speaking whatever it is that it's saying to you ancient right? Greek um, <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen it work a lot and this is a it's a low light thing as you say when the lights are mm. off your brain starts trying to see stuff and it will it doesn't matter whether you believe in ghosts or not it will work it does work right you will look at this thing for long enough and your face will just change. You, quite a lot of people say the fa the head just disappears and another head comes back that looks different. So it is an experiment we're going to be doing. I mean, this sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> but it's um, St. Revel's Castle. Uh, we'll do an investigation there. And the Playhouse Theatre are very good places to for, for this experiment. Fantastic. I haven't been to the castle, but the play Playhouse is proper Extremely creepy, mate. Creepy. Proper creepy. Well... If we want to, I can move on to the Playhouse Theatre. Oh, I think we absolutely seamless. Seamless. lovely. That was seamless. seamless. If it wasn't for the seam we just put in there, that was seamless, <laughs> wasn't it? Uh, well, the Playhouse Theatre, we're going to Cheltenham again. And I'm talking about the Playhouse Theatre partly because it's to do with the Cheltenham Paranormal Festival, which is in, we're broadcasting, broadcasting, we're recording <laughs> in 2017, and we are looking at the end of September. It's um, There's some ghost hunts that we'll be doing there. Something like the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, uh, where we'll be doing a lot of these experiments where you can experiment on Ghost Gimp. Um, <laughs> Vote now for yeah, what you want to do to Ghost Gimp. <laughs> donate what you want on the Ghost Gimp, and uh, we will do things to him. And, but anyway, this theatre, <laughs> oh, the God. Playhouse Theatre. <laughs> um, 
We'll be doing a scrying experiment now, and I won't go into what actually happens during the scrying experiments because we will be doing them there, and I don't want to influence what people see. But one of the famous ghosties there is something you could see if you're a member of the audience. So this is something, book a ticket, go and see a show, and uh, it's quite a cheap, inexpensive, let's say, theatre, and one of the ghosts has been seen by the audience during actual productions, and people have said, oh, I love the show, it's fantastic, didn't understand why that girl walked on and just stood next to the stage and then walked off again, and they're all going, what girl, there was no girl here, uh, I have no idea what you're talking about, and uh, various times that's been seen, it's been seen by stage managers as well, on stage, where they've just looked at each, sort of turned around and gone, why is that girl standing backstage, and then gone hang on, who the hell is that? And they turn back around again, nobody there. That's been seen quite a lot. So if you, from, from a tourist point of view, go and sit in the theatre, uh, get a ticket, get there nice and early and hope that you actually see random people walking onto stage and then walking off again. Also, if you're in the auditorium, the balconies of that theatre, ha- and I've seen this one, uh, a strange misty figure. So if you're sat in the auditorium, the balcony on the right-hand side, your right-hand side as you're staring at the stage, I've seen a, a weird sort of misty figure just stood up there near the follow spotlights. And many, many people have seen, I've seen that, that one. You've seen that one? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Because I thought it was Alex. I thought Alex yes. was up there. And then he came kind of From to the side else. of me. And I was <laughs> <Yes>. like, <laughs> um. I'm just unsettled knowing that I have sat there. <laughs> for the duration of a show that I, I was I, running no, I sound won't go for. Up there. I won't go up there. What? Well, the, no. the, the, other balcony, the other balcony, um, oh my goodness, I had to go no. into the theatre to talk to the manager, and they said, oh, he's in the theatre, in the auditorium. So I walked in, and as I walked in, you walk underneath that the, the left-hand balcony, and I heard somebody walk above my head. Very clearly, footsteps walking along, you could hear them. So I started saying, ah, Paul, uh, I've just been sitting in. They said you're in. Um, I'm going to talk to you. And I kept talking. And then looked up and I realised there was nobody up there. Could still hear the footsteps walking and yet nobody up there at all. So that's three ghosts that you can see at the Playhouse Theatre just by sitting in the theatre uh, before a show starts. Other people in the theatre may object if you're there going, will you all shut up? I'm trying to do an investigation in here. I've only got 20 minutes before the curtains open. Uh, but the the rest of the playhouse, I mean, it's phenomenal. I won't go into too much, but um, the girl, because this one's now out there in the public, uh, um, on the internet somewhere, uh, the girl is quite possibly a girl who died, and they finally found out her name, and I won't give that away just yet, It used to be a swimming pool, the whole theatre. So the auditorium, you could still technically flood with water and go swimming in there. And so everyone thinks, oh, she must have drowned. Not true. What happened was, when it wasn't being used as a swimming pool, they used to cover up the pool with wooden boards, and it would be a gym. And there was a big vaulting horse in there and people doing whatever. And this girl was, I've been told, was cycling around the outside of the swimming pool bit and crashed into a vaulting horse, which fell over and crushed her to death. Um, So they think that is the girl. And this story only came to light a couple of years ago. Um, so if anybody was going to come up with a story, you generally think somebody drowned in the swimming pool or whatever. Uh, but... The the age of the girl that's seen seems to correspond with the the girl that died in the actual building at the time, which makes it more impressive, I think. Uh, wow. Whereas if if you knew about the story before you went in there and started seeing a girl, then you kind of think, oh, well, I was expecting to see yeah. that. But um, no one's expecting to see this young girl appear on stage. It is. It, it's a very creepy play. I mean, Sam, you haven't been in there, have you? No. Um, it is. It is very creepy, and you can go down into where. Exactly yeah, well, where if you the, come to the, the ghost hunts, we take people under the stage. Steps, yeah, it's, it's very where there are a couple of coffins as well under there. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> one of which we do Ouija boards on. Empty, <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> but there's um, the, that's not the only death. There's been quite a few deaths and suicides and things in the building. I, I, so I don't want to give too much away because hopefully several people will be coming to join us on a ghost hunt there, to learn but, all about yes. it. But there are ghosts all over the entire building, and um, even ones that are non-visible. As I said, I heard the footsteps. A friend of mine, her and her husband, were locking the theatre up, 
at about two o'clock in the morning. They've just finished the shows, done the get out and so on. And so they went around the building. And as you do, you have to, there's a particular route you take around the building, locking each door behind you. And then you leave via one particular door. And that way, you know, everything's locked. And so they're just about to go out of their fire exit door. And they said, well, we'll just do one quick check, go in the auditorium. And they walked in and, uh, um, they said, uh, they got into the auditorium and they said, right, come on then. Anyone in here? We're locking up jokingly knowing that they're the only two people there and they both said they heard get out <laughs> oh. at which point they did <laughs> very very rapidly wow. as tourists you won't be allowed Saturday. i was literally about to say are you <laughs> forwarded there yeah oh. i'm going there oh, in fact, you? I'm going you're performing there, there this week yeah it's saturday <laughs> and i'm going there tomorrow night for our uh oh, tech and cool. friday for the, friday night for the dress but I'll be quitting that show. <laughs> <laughs> well, the dressing rooms are all haunted. The main auditorium is haunted. The workshops are haunted. The uh, <laughs> an upstairs room, isn't there? Up, yeah, yeah. Up those upstairs. Upstairs. Uh, yeah, stone but even to get to those upstairs rooms, you're going up a haunted staircase as yeah. well. So it's a phenomenal building with uh, at least, I think it's seven deaths in the building. I can't remember off the top of my head, but yeah. But we filmed, um, I will give a spoiler to a TV show we filmed there that should be being broadcast pr pretty soon. Um, and um, if you know theatres at all, you know you're not allowed to use naked flames. Um, sorry. So there's a big gap between naked and... <laughs> not allowed to use naked. Not allowed to use naked. Not allowed to use naked. Insert <laughs> your own <laughs> name. Uh, right. uh, naked flames in a the theatre. And you have these special candles that are battery operated and so on. But... We were filming there, and there was Ian Lawman from uh, anyone who watches Most Haunted will know he did a couple of series of Most Haunted. Mm -hmm. And so there was him and a couple of other paranormal investigators and myself and the TV presenter sat around this table, and they said, do you mind if we use candles? And uh, we said, well, you're going to have to check with the theatre manager. Thankfully, the theatre manager happened to be there, so they went out and checked with him. And he went, yeah, yeah, not a problem. So we sent um, one of the runners into town <laughs> and to Poundland to find some candles from somewhere. And he came back. He said, the only candles I could get were these. And he pulled out a bag of 50 tea light uh. candles <laughs> that were bubblegum flavoured. <laughs> I thought it was a birthday candle. <laughs> <like, laughs> but it was. May as well have been. So we had these bright red uh, little tea light candles, lit them all, and the whole place just smelt of bubblegum. Uh -huh. um, and so we start, um, that made it hard enough. But we all got our hands on this table sat on the stage um, and it's used as a cinema as well so we've got this bright white screen behind us so it was, it was reflecting a fair bit of light and we're sat there for a while and Ian starts chatting away to the, the spirits in the room and the table starts moving and quite quickly starts sort of you could feel the energy sort of building up in this table and it was starting to move slowly and then it started moving quite a bit to the extent that we had to stand up as this table was moving around the stage the table then lifted up and flew kind of sideways and all the candles by which time we've now got 50 molten red <laughs> candles uh -huh. right on this table went sliding off the table as the table started flying towards the bright white cinema screen that was going to be projecting a film in seven hours time <laughs> thankfully not a single bit of wax ended up on the screen but the floor was just covered in this bright red wax it was like somebody had been murdered on stage it was this huge expanse of red everywhere um and it's a brilliant footage, and I haven't seen the programme yet, but it's out very, very soon. And I went up to the theatre manager, I said, well, very good news, and some very not good news. I said, you have got the best episode in this series <laughs> right, of stuff that happened. But do you have something like a paint scraper or something like that I could borrow for the next couple of hours? <laughs> and we spent an hour on our hands and knees scraping sort of semi-warm <laughs> molten wax off of this stage so that it could be used in about six, six or seven hours' time. Look on the internet. It's there somewhere. I think it's a TV show called Ghost Chasers. I think it's been broadcast already online, uh, but it was made for European company. So I know it's been broadcast on Sky at the moment. But yes, come and join us at the Playhouse house and uh and levitate battery operated candles because we're not doing that again <laughs> <laughs> some interesting stuff there um but i think that's that's about it for um for this episode thank you very much uh for listening thank you very much for being part of the paranormal tourist being one of our listeners um all that really remains is to say bye for now so it's bye from me it's bye from me <laughs> it's by from someone else and it's by from him 
<laughs> we look forward to chatting at you next time. Goodbye. Bye for now. Bye. Goodbye. See you later. Bye bye. <laughs>